Welcome back to A20 special relativity. In the previous section, we have seen how we can look at energy and momentum of particles in a decay. Here, we now wanna, in collisions of particles, create new particles. So the example, the first example here is the collision of two protons to create a proton, a neutron, and a charged pion. The masses are given there. So the question now is, what is the minimal energy needed uh, in order for this pro process to occur in a fixed target experiment. Fixed target experiment is we have a, an accelerated proton and another proton at rest. This might just be a hydrogen target just sitting there. So the question is how much energy, how much do we have, have to accelerate the proton for this process to be possible? Now, again, stop the video and try to work this out. The important part here is um, to realize that minimal energy here means that after the decay, all the decay after the process occurred, all the new particles need to be addressed. That is, a, that is when the process uh, requires minimal energy. So instead of analyzing this in the laboratory frame, we want to analyze this in the center of mass frame, right? The momentum has to be conserved in this, in this discussion. So there needs to be some sort of momentum, but in the center of mass frame, that's not required. So in that frame, the momentum of all outgoing particles can be zero. And that's how we start the discussion here. So in this S prime frame, here S prime is the center of mass frame. The energy, the minimal energy required is two times the mass of the proton times gamma. So here those two protons are colliding with the, with the, with the velocity. And that's then equal to the energy after this process, C squared times the sum of the masses the mass of the proton, the neutron, and the charged pion. And then you just have to solve this for, for gamma to find gamma equal to 1.08, or better in this frame of 0 0.37. Note, this is the gamma, relativistic gamma, or the velocity better of the protons, two protons in the center of mass frame. So we're not quite there yet with our answer. The answer then needs to be boosted back into the laboratory frame. And we have seen how we can do this for, for better velocities in general. We find better in the laboratory frame is two times or just result 0 0.37 over one plus 0.37 squared, which is 0 0.65. That velocity we can then take and calculate the gamma factor of the proton in the fixed target experiment. All right, so we analyze the situation in the center of mass frame and then did a Lorentz transformation by just looking at the velocity into the fixed target frame. So this means now numerically that the proton colliding with the proton at rest has a total energy of this one proton of gamma m naught c square, which is 0 0.32 times 938 MeV over c square. MeV. And so that results in 1.238 1, 1 GeV, but we're interested in the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy here is given by gamma minus one m naught c square, which is 300 MeV. So we have to accelerate a proton to 300 MeV in order to be able to have this process to occur. All right, very similar problem now, but here we wanna produce antimatter. So we have a process of proton plus proton into three protons and an antiproton. Charge is conserved. And in the initial state, the charge was two. In the final state, the charge was two as well. Okay. This works very similar as in the previous problem. But what we want to do here is compare the fixed target with symmetric collisions. Okay. So again, the question is, what is the minimal energy needed? in order to produce antiprotons in proton-proton collisions. Okay, so following, exactly following the same uh, procedure as before, in the center of mass energy, the energy is two times the mass of the proton times gamma times C square, and that's four times the mass of the proton. Okay, gamma prime, so the, the gamma factor in the center of mass frame is two, beta is 0 0.75. And then we just do the very same thing again. We calculate, the velocity in the fixed target frame. And we find the velocity of beta of 0.96 and gamma of 3.57. So if you compare this now, 
we need a pair of one GeV, remember gamma minus one is the kinetic energy, protons in a collider experiment, or 2.57 GeV protons in a fixed target experiment. Okay, so you see that in fixed target experiment, in order to produce new particles, the energy has to be much larger, a factor of 2.5 here in this example, than a colliding experiment. And that explains why we use collider experiments in order to test the energy frontier, to, in order to produce the largest possible energies. And the LHC is one example where we have proton proton collisions in a circular ring where those protons are brought together in symmetrical collisions. 